Hi everyone, welcome. I'm so excited that you're here again this week. It's really been a great, fun experience. Um, my name is Annette Nafe. I am the CEO and Creative Director of Nafe Productions. We are creative, uh, we are an event production company uh, based in New York City. We do corporate, social, nonprofit, and weddings. Welcome to A Turn of Events, where we help you take a positive spin on your business. Uh, it's been crazy with COVID, so we're trying to help everyone to figure out what they're doing with their business and how they can take events from live to virtual. And my guest today is Rob Allen. He is he runs my AV piece a division of my company, and they are fantastic. I've worked with them for many, many years, and we're going to talk about AV in a virtual platform. So let's bring Rob on. How are you, Rob? Hey, Annette. I'm good. How are you? Excellent, excellent. I'm so happy that you're here. We get tons of questions. You and I are working on all kinds of stuff right now. And a lot of questions around how to do a virtual event and what is the technology around that. So we're going to um, talk about that. But first, why don't you tell everybody who you are, where you came from, how you got involved in all of this, and what you guys are doing. Sure, absolutely. So uh, first off, before I get into that, thank you for, for having me on the show. This is a a cool thing to do, I think. You know, in a in a time where our industry was definitely hit with a lot of uh, craziness, um, this is really cool that we're able to kind of get together and uh, help each other out, share some ideas, collaborate, all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah. thanks so much for for having me on here. We're working together more than we ever have. Right? <laughs> that, that is true. That is true. So, yeah, my name is uh, Rob Allen, and I work for a company called Panavid. We've been around for uh, a little over forty years now. And we handle everything from audio, video, lighting, staging, cameras, LED walls, the whole nine. If it's in the, the AV industry, we have uh, used it, dealt with it, own it, all of that. So it's a, it's a great experience, a great company. Um, you know, all of our gear is top notch. All of our uh, techs are top notch. We, we really take pride in, in the work we've done. And I'm real thankful to be working with them. I started uh, full time back in 2013. So I've been there. Uh, I guess a little over seven years now. Um, and yeah, it's great. Before Panavid, I, I was doing some coordination in fashion shows and some music videos and things like that. So been around for uh, for a little while in the industry prior to Panavid, but this is uh, this is my home now. And it's, it's great, it's exciting, and uh, yeah, just love it. Yeah, uh, Jason thinks so too. J Jason's a great guy. He helps us out with a lot of LED work. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, so I I love you guys. Obviously, you're top notch, and all your staff is fantastic. And I never have to worry about anything. I know, especially working with you, you're fantastic. So let's get started. Mm -hmm. So where do we start when planning a virtual event? Sure, and, and I think you know one of the misconceptions is that you know virtual events need to be totally different from what live events are. Um, but that's not actually the case. I mean, it might be different different equipment and obviously different looks, but. When it comes to where to start, it's the same place, and and I think that's with the vision. And you know, I think every event needs to have their vision, that experience that they're going to look for. So I think that's where it always needs to start. And whether that's, um, you know, on the AV side or not, there there needs to be some sort of vision of what you want that end product to be. And then obviously, you know, when it comes to production, using a company like Panavid uh, to kind of get you there and let you know what it what it takes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is, listen, there's a strategy for live and there's a strategy for virtual, but mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's something that having us helping you with that strategy, both on both sides of it, the production side and the AV side is really, really important. So yeah, totally. everybody's doing Zoom right now. That's like a big deal. So why do we need a production company and what's the difference? Sure. I, I think, you know, a lot of people right now are, are Zoomed out. Um, you know, it's it's uh, everybody jumped on and was using it for every single meeting, every single call. You know, even though our, our phones still worked to talk uh, just with audio, everybody jumped over to the video calls because we weren't having those uh, face to face interactions anymore. Um, but there's a lot of limitations when it comes to Zoom. Um, you know, it uh, everybody who has done a Zoom meeting with more than two people have experienced some sort of technical difficulties or connection issues or you know the the list goes on and on and on so using an actual production company uh there's a lot more that 
we can create even when you're using a platform like Zoom. You know, Zoom's a platform that we've still incorporated into a lot of our into a lot of our events, but what we're doing prior to Zoom is what ends up separating us. You know, and I think one of the one of the big things is taking in each of the individual presenters as an individual feed. So, right. you know, we're not having a screen that's got a, a ton of boxes and we're just, you know, unmuting and muting people. We're taking them in as individual video feeds. That way we have full control over their audio, over their video, and allow the end the end audience person to experience, you know, more of a webcast than a Zoom call. Because I think that's ultimately what a production company like Panavit is going to bring is we're going to give you a professional webcast, a professional broadcast, and it's not just going to be your your standard Zoom call. Right, right. I mean, I there's nothing worse when you're sitting on a virtual and the host is trying to run the video and it's not going and they can't hear or it's too loud or it's not loud enough. You don't have to worry about that when you have a question. And yes, of course, we're going to talk about pricing later, but yeah. it's the big million dollar question. But, um, you know, it, it's worth it if you're trying to, um, you know, be look professional, look at you have a great brand, you know, like really go with what you're what you presented as a live event. It's really important. So we yeah. stress that a lot. Um, so what is the right platform to use? And, you know, that's like another big question that we get, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's it's one where it, it, that's a hard answer or a, a hard question to answer um, just as an individual, you know, here you go kind of a thing. Right. Um, and, and the reason why is because every event is different, even the virtual ones, they're all unique in their own sort of way. Right. And I mean, as both of us have experienced over the last four months, there's yeah. a million platforms out there right now, you know, and some of those platforms have been around prior to COVID. And a lot of those platforms kind of just just came about in the last three months when people started scrambling that, you know, when they when they needed to host something. So I think ultimately what it comes down to is, you know, kind of back to that first question on the vision where it's like, let's let's talk about let's collaborate on what the event um, is supposed to be, what you want that end result to be. And then that allows you know me to kind of take a look at all the platforms that are out there and say, you know what, I think this is the right one for your particular event. You know, because some some events don't need the the really, you know, the 3D venue look that that a lot of platforms are doing out there. Some of them, you know, just need a, a small little custom website with a link out to, you know, what the Zoom call is going to be or the Zoom webinar or you know, we can get a little more in depth and do a, you know, a branded website and then have some tabs that they can go to for some, some sponsors and all of that. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's no one right answer for something like this. It's all about what that particular uh, event is looking for. And then, you know, we'll help lead you to that right platform. And, and that's, you know, part of my job was to really look at all the platforms out there, see see which ones we can trust, which ones we can't, which ones you know, have the the better, um, you know, things about them. And, and then I can kind of lead clients to to those platforms. Right. Yeah, I've, I've sent you a lot of platforms. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have. I don't yes, wanna, have. That's not my thing. Like, obviously, I'm well versed in, in what, you know, is out there because you and I get on these calls, we talk to clients, we educate them on what's going to work for their platform. And so I, you know, but I send it to you and like, you're the expert. So I keep that part of it. I don't want to be an expert in everything. So yeah, no, and I appreciate that too. Cause you yeah. know, there's only 24 hours in my day. So I can't, I can't look at every single platform out there, but I, I do my best for sure. Yeah, no. And you're, you, you get it. So I'm not, you know, I'm a little tech, but not much. So, um, okay. So, uh, how long, and this is another question that's really important. People ask all the time, and this is something to really consider is how long should your event be? Um, is there a, a, any setup like a live event? So, you know, it should it be set like a live event? Yeah. So, um, you know, our, our attention spans, you know, is, uh, definitely not what it used to be. <laughs> um, you know, I'm sure even now, you know, people watching have, uh, have already zoned out of us, but <laughs> uh, when, it, when it comes to how long your event should be, um, you know, we've had events that are 30 to 45 minutes all the way up to about four and a half or five hours uh, per day um, that we've done over the last few months. And 
when it gets to be around that four hour mark, um, that kind of seems to be where we've we've seen a decent drop off. Um, but even that, even at that four hour mark, um, you have to put in breaks. You know, you have to put in uh, some fun interactive things like games uh, or have have prizes so that people know that they actually need to pay attention <laughs> to you know to win some prizes at the end. So um, yeah, it, so I, I would put it around that four hour mark to be kind of where where you want to to finish. Um, right. It's so much better to do you know two or three days of you know two to three hours worth of content than it is to try to get you know six or seven hours into one day where you can easily do it in a in a live setting. You know you can do that with the breaks and the lunches and all that kind of stuff. But to sit in front of a, a computer for that long staring at a screen is just it's just not it's not possible. And then yeah, for your second question about the setup, um, you know it is really important to have. Uh, set up days on virtual events. Uh, you know, when it comes to a live event, that that's also very important. But there's plenty of times where it's a you know in and out in one kind of one day when it's a smaller event. But when it comes to virtual, I mean, you know, there's a lot of testing, a lot of connections that need to to happen and be secure. So you know, in order to do it right, having that full setup day where you know we're just setting up the back end of what the virtual event's going to be is super important. Right. Um, so some of my clients are doing, just to talk about the timing, some people are doing just a couple hours every day for even a couple weeks. If you wanted to do, it, it depends on what kind of event it is. Obviously, if we're doing fundraisers, we're not doing a four-hour fundraiser. We're doing like an hour and a half, two hours at the most. Um, I know that, you know, and then inner engagement is key i've said this on probably every single interview that i've done in the last few months and engagement is everything to keep it exciting so that that hour and a half or two hours goes by so quickly leaving them wanting more yeah. um, and there's really fun ways to do that and let's talk about what other technology can we bring in to make it more impactful or engaging since sure and that so yeah, so I think, you know, uh, things like gaming, uh, you know, bringing in some games, asking questions, you know, especially starting out an event that way, uh, yeah. instead of kind of just getting right into the content, starting out with some sort of, you know, questions, fun questions to answer and having those prizes like I, I just previously mentioned. Um, you know, other things are, are polling. That's always a good thing. Like after, if you have multiple sessions that are happening in, in you know, one event, uh, doing some sort of survey or polling, uh, even during or right after each of the sessions, that's that's a good thing to keep people um, engaged. Chatting is another another big one. Obviously, if you can find a platform that can turn the chatting off when the actual session is happening, um, you know that's uh, that's ideal. Just so people aren't actually chatting when they're supposed to be paying attention. Right. Um, and then uh, you know some live Q and A actually, uh, and, and when I say that, I don't actually mean you know just typed Q and A. Um, we we've come up with a solution where you know we depending on the platform again, we allow people who are watching to click on a link, and then we can actually virtually uh, bring them in for them to ask a live video question. So we kind of do like a you know a split screen or you know kind of just add them into a panel to be able to to ask their question live. And that's been something that our, our clients have loved. Um, and we'll be doing that on, on an event you and I are doing together in September. And, you know, it's it's something that's really cool and kind of makes the audience actually feel like they are there. It's the closest thing that, you know, we can kind of get to actually right. asking that question live when you're in a, a conference room. Yeah, you know? everybody loves to be brought on. So that's exciting when they get yeah. called. And it's just like, you know, standing up when someone calls your name and you you stand up and ask questions live. So yeah, I absolutely. Yeah, and and another another thing that I think um, you know really helps with the uh, the engagement is is doing some hybrid events. You know, and, and hybrid events are where you know you'll have a, a small crew and a small um, presenters in say a studio or an office or you know wherever they they want to be, and then everything else is getting broadcasted out. Because um, right. what's really cool with that is we can bring in. Uh, you know, an LED wall to be right behind the host. And then what we can what we can do from there is bring in some video feeds and throw them up on the LED wall. Right. So now that person who's the host can literally just turn to the side of them and have that like conversation. And the person is, you know, really huge on the screen. And, and, and that brings another that also helps the host out, you know, because the host is kind of lonely up there where they're used to having, you know, all sorts of people. So right. it kind of brings in that that nice communication that way, too. Right, right. I um, I was doing a 
uh, I was on a call with a bunch of event professionals and we had a gaming company come in and show us their platform and they offer a one hour gaming thing, which I said to them, "My, we don't need that. We don't need an hour. We'll need like maybe even 15 minutes or something. And what they did was they asked questions. So you had like a multiple choice, like, okay, um, who's saying whatever, like fun stuff, right? So, um, and everybody has to click, you get a multiple choice and you click the answer. And it was really, you could see everybody on the side talking, but it was just, and there was an MC and he had lots of energy and really fun and got everybody going. And I, I was like, oh gosh, I was really trying to get to the top of the leaderboard. And every, that's what I could see everybody on the leaderboard. So you can see your name rising as you answer the questions. That makes it fun and engaging. We were, we had a blast. Like it was so oh, much totally. fun. They only ran it for, because they were showing it, but they do run it. So they said for an hour, it's like $4,000. But I said, if I only needed like 15 minutes, they said, well, you know, we'll work that out. So I haven't talked to them yet, but just to give everybody an idea, you know, you probably cost, I don't know, a thousand bucks, 1500 bucks if we ran it for a, a 15 minutes, which is worth the money to make it fun and engaging. And then people talk about your event. Oh, totally. Yeah. And, and speaking of that, it's super important that your host is that energetic personality because, you know, you don't want somebody up there who's not actually going to be getting people excited about it. Yeah, no, this guy was... And what I liked about this platform was, and I'll share this platform later, but what I liked about it was if I mentioned, everybody was talking about what they were drinking, what's their favorite drink, and I mentioned that I like to have a scotch. And and so all of a sudden, in the middle of the screen was a box, and there was a scot a bottle of scotch that came <laughs> up. The guy in the back end was bringing up things that people were saying. I was like, hey, I just said scotch, and it came up. So I thought that that was really clever. Hmm and kept even more engagement and getting everybody involved. So I thought oh, that was- totally. Yeah, that's cool. I thought that was exciting. Okay, so um, you mentioned hybrid. So do you see, okay, let's explain what that means just so in case people don't know. There's live events and we all know what that is. And then there's virtual where we're on like you and I are right now. And then hybrid is someone sitting in, you know, on a stage. And you also can bring in your branding, which is really great good lighting make sure you have good lighting and all of that and also by the way you guys if you have any questions please ask us so we can you know because rob's got some you know great information here so if you have any questions please ask us and i have one that just came up but we'll we'll get to that so hybrid do you see hybrid meetings staying around for a while yeah and, and you know what they've actually been around for a while too yeah. um you know it's it's not something that, it's actually something that we as a company have been doing for you know 10 15 years Right. Uh, we, we deal with a lot of pharmaceutical companies and, you know, in effort to get their their drugs out there and, and you know, all of their medicine, you know, where we have a doctor in a studio who is uh, doing his presentation about that. And then that's being broadcasted out to all of their salespeople on their iPads sitting in the individual doctor's offices. So, you know, it's definitely something that has been around for a long time. So I also don't see it going anywhere because of that fact. Right. Um, and it's going to be huge, you know, coming up recently. I think everybody is just, you know, itching to get back to to being uh, together. So I think when the when the parameters allow and the restrictions allow that, you know, hybrid is going to be the way for a, a while until, you know, really large meetings are, are meant to or are able to be back. And even then, you know, it, it's still because we were, you know, two years ago, we were still doing huge live events, but hybrids were still still around i just they'll they've been here forever and will continue to be there i, I think they will be especially for the next year or so more so than anything um it does make to have a small little audience it makes it a little more exciting but um even to have a stage it makes it more exciting so um what's the difference between live av equipment and labor versus virtual av equipment and labor yeah. So, you know, a, a lot of my clients on the quotes that I'm, I'm having out, they're not used to seeing certain equipment or, you know, they're they're seeing equipment that's now a little more expensive. And, yeah. and uh, you know, one of the main reasons is uh, in order to do it right, you know, like I talked about earlier, where you need to take all the presenters as individual video feeds, you know, that means that the switcher that we're using to, you know, throw up whatever sort of image or, or person that the audience needs to see needs a lot more inputs. Right. Um, so, you know, your standard live event that you're doing when you're just showing the graphics on the screen and you have a graphic computer, you know, this is a whole lot more. If you have, a, you know, a panel of six different people, that's six inputs that we now need to go into our switcher. And right. along with that, 
the outputs that are going back to those people. So one of the things, again, that kind of separates us is the return video feeds that we're sending back to people. So this doesn't seem like a regular Zoom call is every person that they're talking to. So if we take a, a panel, for instance, you have a moderator and you have four, four people who are, are on that panel. Each of those people, what they're seeing on their screen is everyone except for themselves. You know, right. So when you're on a Zoom call, you see yourself and everybody else you're, you're talking to. But we're actually taking that video feed out. We're taking your audio feed out. That way there's no, there's no possible chance for audio you know, a loop or, or feedback. But then it also makes for a more you know, easily conversed conversation. Right. Um, because you're not actually seeing yourself. You're not taking a look at, oh, you know, I got to fix this or I should lean this way or, you know, anything like that. It's, it's just allowing for a smoother conversation with people. So that's one of the big differences is, you know, the equipment does need to, to be bigger um, as far as the inputs and the outputs go. And then the, the um, labor side, having someone who knows broadcast is so important. Um, you know, broadcast and live events are, it's a, they're two different ball games. Right. And somebody who who knows broadcast and knows actually, you know, what the audio is supposed to sound like on the far end and not just, you know, in your ear is super, super important. So you want to make sure that that the labor and the text that you have are broadcast uh, text, because if they're just regular live production guys, they, they may not understand. Yeah, yeah. Very good point. So Chris has a question. How can a speaker performer mix voice and music live from their home or office so it sounds professional? Most mics on PC laptops cancel one or the other out and platforms such as Zoom and StreamYard put out a very corrupted signal. Sure. Yeah. So I think, you know, one of the things that, that we've been doing also is um, allowing to send kits over to, um, you know, presenters and, and uh, people who are going to be speaking. Uh, you know, that way it's a it's a separate kind of, you know, we send a, a separate microphone, a separate small camera, a separate, um, you know, lighting package to kind of make them really sound better and sound professional. And then I think a lot of it also comes down to allowing, you know, my audio engineer who's heading it up to be able to, you know, take in that audio audio feed and mix that into the, the stream as a separate, a separate mix. Um, you know, that way we're not, you know, fighting against another audio um, stream that's going to be ducking it out like platforms like Zoom do. Yeah, yeah. That's why rehearsal is really important. Yeah, yeah, that too. We get to we get to test all that, do connection days and, and go through all that stuff and then make changes before the actual live event happens. Right, right. Okay, great. So, all right, um, COVID, social distancing, a lot of people are doing events outside. What tips do you have to still give the audience a good experience? Yeah, so I think you know one of the biggest things is, uh, especially with social distancing, is that you know things just need to be bigger as far as the video you know end sources. Um, and when you're doing something outside, it is really hard to do projection, and it's even really hard to do TV monitors. Right. Um, with that sun glaring down, that is, uh, it's almost impossible to to be able to really see those video sources. So I think in efforts to help that, I think a tent is first of all really important because that's not only going to help with you know darkening the area but it's also going to help with weather wise because you know we're we have totally unexpected weather especially here in the in the northeast you never know what it's actually going to going to be um but even you know so when you have a really nice tent and i i would recommend not cheaping out on a tent either because a lot of cheap tents out there they're still letting the sun through it's still gonna you know rain through <laughs> when uh when it's raining um, so really making sure that that tent is going to be as dark as possible. Um, that way, you know, if you're, if you are doing projection or doing TVs that it, it's going to help out so much better. But I think overall, I would recommend LED walls all day long uh, when it comes to that. They're just so much brighter than the projection and the, and the screens out there. You can get them as, as big as you possibly want um, because you're obviously building them with, you know, little cabinets. And it's just going to make for a much better experience. I think another thing that's really important is doing, you know, delay video. Um, because with social distancing, again, if you have a, a big event and people are really far away and they, you know, they're looking at the front screens like people are, you know, two inches big. So, you know, having some sort of delay screens is important too. And then when it comes to the audio, um, you know, when you're outside, audio is just going to travel forever. But the longer it travels, the more muddied, 
uh, it's going to sound. So right. having having the proper audio equipment that also has some steerable technology in it, which means we can steer the sound into where we actually want it to go. That way, the sound is focused where the audience is and not everywhere else. It's not you know bouncing off the the other buildings next door or you know traveling to the neighbors when you're doing something really loud. So th there's a there's a lot of technology out there that can uh, make the experience better. And really, the best way is just to get with uh get with us and we'll walk you through it yeah helen says the event would have to support a live presenter feeds to that virtual audience so um i think um also just you know look we're here to help to help you if you just want us to consult and give you some you know like advice on what you need to do most times when we do that they hire us because we realize Oh my gosh, we can't do this. So, you know, we're happy to consult and, uh, and talk about that. So um, if, if, if I'm looking to grow my audience virtually, what can I expect as a change or growth for the AV? Sure. Yeah. So a lot of people are, are trying to do that right now. You know, when it comes to people not meeting in person, it's a whole lot easier to, you know, roll out of bed and sit at your computer and, and join a conference than it was to, you know, go out and do all the, the traveling that it takes to get there. And taking time away from, from other things. Um, but what we, uh, depending on the platform, obviously, the audience size really doesn't affect the AV backend that we're taking care of. Uh, again, depending on the platform that you're, you're looking at, because some platforms uh, do have a maximum amount of attendees who are able to watch. There's also bandwidth issues and, and all of that. But um, the main thing that I think what causes the AV on the virtual side to really grow is the number of presenters that you're having. Again, you know, we've talked about it a couple of times now with taking everybody in as individual feeds. That means more computers, more encoders, more text to monitor that stuff, uh, you know, bigger audio consoles, bigger switchers. So, you know, it really comes down to what how many presenters you're actually going to have. And then and then that's going to really um, determine the kind of growth that that we're going to be doing. Right, right. And uh, uh, re pre-recorded versus live is also another thing that we get in a lot of questions about. And that, yeah. changes, you know, that changes your pricing, which is my next question is how much do we expect to spend? Yeah. So this is this is the fun one. And this is, you know, what right off the bat, this is the question that we get a lot of the time. And, you know, we've, we've done virtual events that are, are really, really tight budgets. And we're spent, you know, the client spending a few thousand dollars uh, you know, and then and then the sky's the limit up there. So, you know, we're, we're definitely a company that we want to work with people's budgets. Uh, we understand that, especially right now, uh, you know, cash flow is something that a lot of companies don't have, especially when, you know, you're dealing in the nonprofit world and they're they're trying to do their their fundraising. And, you know, without that, they you know, there's nothing coming in. So, uh, yeah, I mean, a little to a lot is the range that, <laughs> that I can give you. And a lot of that really is just going to depend on what your particular event is trying to accomplish and you know i'm here to not only help let you know what you need but let you know where we can possibly save some money and what what limitations or, or complications that, that might bring to the actual end result of the event well yes we, we do a lot of that. We're, we're working right now with a client and we're i think we're on our fifth revision <laughs> Um, you know, they start high and then, you know, especially fundraisers don't want to spend the money. And I don't, I think that they're not, their mindset isn't ready to spend the same amount of money that they spent on a live. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're working with them and, and we understand that, but we want to help, especially with fundraisers. I mean, it's important to get the, the word out and their cause and stuff like that. So, all right, well, this is so great. I have, we have a few questions and if anybody else has questions, I think Helen has a question here. What's a good approach to invite participants to a single virtual venue for a collaborative experience, we style? Is that we? Did I say that right? What tech would that involve? Um, hmm. Let me just reread this question. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand. Single virtual venue. Um, Helen, why don't you ask it again and see if we can help you? But we'll come back because we have a couple other questions. So why don't you re-ask that? Um, okay, and if it comes to you, okay. So um, I do have a question. We had some people that wrote in when I had asked some questions on Facebook, and um, and then someone else just wrote in on the other on uh, my um, 
other Facebook feed. So you mentioned LED walls right um, behind the pres presenter. Isn't there that weird video effect when you get close up to a camera? That's Elaine's asking that. Sure. Yeah. So that's something called video more. And I think everybody has, has seen it. You know, it, it looks like there's, there's waves in the led wall or it, you know, it looks like uh, there's lines in it. And, you know, part of that is, is not like, you can't really fix that. That's kind of just what it is. Um, but a lot of it, it can be fixed by choosing the right led wall. And the big part about that is the, the pixel pitch. So right. you know, the pixel pitch, uh, the tighter you get. So the smaller you get in the pixel pitch, um, the less video more you will have. Um, you know, we have walls that are a, a 1.5 pixel pitch in, in production, and we've used them uh, where we are super close up on the camera. The, the presenter is literally right up on the wall, and we're not getting any of that video more because of the type of the wall that it is. And um, what, what's the cost of that? Uh, expensive. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, you know, we, we charge usually about $300 a panel um, for something like that. And the panels are 11 inches by 19 inches. Okay. So, you know, obviously, depending on how, the size of the wall, then that's going to determine how, how much that's actually going to cost. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a, a big thing because you want it to look professional, especially if you're bringing this into a virtual experience. You don't want people to, to be seeing a bunch of waves on the on the graphics that you're trying to put up. So, you know, Plus, choosing the right LED wall is important. Takes away from the content, so it's distracting, you know? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay, great. So Steve has a question. What advice do you have for uh, when to bring in an AV company in the planning stages? Sure, yeah. So uh, right away would be my suggestion. Um, you know, we a AV people don't think like everybody else, you know, and, and vice versa. Um, so whenever you're, you're again, trying to figure out that vision, trying to figure out what you're looking to do, uh, it's important to talk to an AV company because, you know, we have different ideas. Um, we have, you know, especially if, if you're trying to figure out what you can do, um, you might, you know, take an idea and throw it out of the window because you didn't think it was possible. But if you had that AV partner right from the start, um, you know, you can create really, really awesome experiences. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and then Ephraim has a question. Our audience is not what uh, you would call tech savvy. This could even be their first virtual event. What tips do you have for them to get involved? Yeah, so that's gonna, the platform is gonna be a huge, a huge thing with that. Cause obviously the minimal clicks, uh, you know, for somebody to, to be able to get on, uh, to log in, to register, to choose the right room that they're going in. You know, so as, as minimal clicks as you can get, that's going to be important. So the platform plays a big part there. Uh, but also, let's just, you know, take it a step further. And if they're, say, a, a presenter and they're not tech savvy, uh, that's why we have those, you know, connection days where we're, we're doing that test connection. We're doing a rehearsal, getting them used to that sort of environment. Um, but also we have, you know, PDFs that we're sharing with people that gives us step by step you know, this is how you connect, this is what you should see, this is what, you know, you should click on, all of that, just to, you know, take away any of that that fear that some people might have with, you know, being on their computer and getting yeah. involved. Well, another piece is we do a live registration piece. So check in where we do a live um, piece to the event a few days before, and we help with that. We make sure that everybody can get on the platform um, teach them, you know, click them around a little bit, tell them, give them some tips so that we are there live when they check in um, yeah. and really help them through the platform, especially if it is a platform that they're not familiar with. Most everybody knows kind of how to do a Zoom now. So, you know, I've been on Zoom forever, but, you know, it's just started now with everybody on it. But I think it's important to have that education piece on that. So, um, yeah, totally. Great. So, well, Rob, this has been great. Fantastic. If you yeah. guys want to reach out to Rob or reach out to me, we're happy to help, you know, with any of your questions and do a little consult and see what you need to do and give you some education on how to do a virtual event or even hybrid. Um, Panavid, P-A-N-A-V-I-D.com. You can reach Rob there or you all know where to reach me, Nave Productions, events at NaveProductions.com. Thank you so much. It's always thank a pleasure. Thank you. And uh, thank you again. It's been great. Awesome. Okay. Take care. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you soon.